Say what you like about Forza Horizon, but to me the true blueprint for the best open world racing games is still Burnout Paradise. The Crew Motorfest is the latest title to join the line of games that aim to build on that and give players the perfect automotive playground. It may not bring a whole lot of new ideas, but Motorfest manages to hit what feels like a pretty sweet spot. There are lots of entertaining races, tons of challenges and collectibles, demolition derbies and a roster of over 600 vehicles, if you include model variants. Blasting around over land, sea and air can be a lot of fun, although some of the handling characteristics do take a little getting used to. The reliance on high speed drifts, implausible jumps and destructible environments put this firmly in the arcade category, but it does try to demand some more nuanced driving too. Rarity graded mods are found as loot items, and tweakable setups for suspension and braking etc let you fiddle around with the balance. Yeah, these guys are good. In truth though, it ends up neither here nor there, at least until you get a feel for the break heavily to stay on course then commit to a drift anyway type of approach. Don't be shy now, set it free. It certainly hasn't stopped me enjoying the game though, and the real star of the show has to be the Hawaiian island of Oahu. It may be more compact than the maps of previous games, but its streets, volcanic slopes and beaches are packed with gorgeous sights and interesting terrain. It helps too that the whole island has apparently become a haven for car enthusiasts, with a motorstorm style festival of racing that lasts all year round. Events are dished out via a series of themed playlists along with a chatty NPC cast that seem determined to tell you everything while racing for maximum distraction. It's going to be a long run demanding stamina and focus. So stop listening to me and get into it. Designed to take you through the different aspects of racing culture, the playlists are actually fun to work through and do a good job of introducing the various events and vehicle types, along with giving you a grand tour of the island. Complete each set of races and you open up more free roaming activities like speed challenges, collectibles to find and even photo opportunities that ask you to take pictures of certain vehicles at specific locations. You'd expect that the game will have a pretty good photo mod then if it's going to encourage photography like this, and well, in fairness, it actually does, although there are certainly a few rough edges. Without including the car meet where you can take pictures while walking around the showroom, the photo mod in Motorfest can only be reached during free drive and is found via a shortcut on the D-pad. That might sound like it's impossible to take shots from any actual races or events, but that's fortunately not the case at all. Thanks to the fact that it's built on top of a full replay video editor, a simple timeline appears at the bottom of the photo mode UI and lets you rewind and fast forward through the last 5 minutes of gameplay. Although the top level photo mode only gets direct access to the current free drive session, simply hit R3 to drop into replay mode and return to the last race. Once you find the right bit of action, the photo mod offers a lot of camera freedom with a large range of movement, 360 degree pan and tilt plus 90 degree roll and a healthy zoom. Controls are also easy to handle and can be fully remapped anyway. Play with the camera, see for yourself. Something you cannot change though is the fact that the camera movement is entirely disabled when the settings menu is on screen. This is just something that I truly hate and it means that the composition cannot be tweaked while working on the various other camera and image options without constantly switching between the two modes. It feels unnecessary too seeing as both analog sticks which previously moved the camera are repurposed to navigate in the UI, something that the D-pad already handles perfectly well. Despite this personal annoyance, the menus do include a strong list of features that can make a massive difference to the final image. Different vehicles can be hidden from view to remove players, AI racers and free drive traffic from the shot, while a couple of sliders also let you splatter on a bit of mud and adjust the amount of damage on each of them. Blur options include focus distance and foreground background blur to adjust the depth of field as well as some motion blur that is applied with a single intensity slider. The latter is most obvious on the rotation of wheels but can be seen on the surroundings too and ensures that shots don't appear completely static. 
Some good image editing options include the basics like brightness and saturation, which are accompanied by eight color filters, six stylized themes, plus the likes of film grain, chromatic aberration, and pixelation effects. The 24 frames can be applied with varying opacity, and there's even control over both time of day and weather, sort of. Like I said earlier, there are some rough edges here. Though the first option is titled weather, it actually cycles through periods of the day like morning, afternoon and dusk, etc. The actual time of day setting then only gets a two and a half hour window within each of them. The weather does change along with the time, but the trouble is that you have no control over it. It is always raining at sunset, whether you like it or not. And if you want rain in the morning, tough, you can't have it. I simply can't see the rationale here when it could be so much simpler and more effective. Similarly, the exposure setting blatantly changes contrast and not exposure at all. Perhaps my biggest gripe though is with the depth of field blur options. For some inexplicable reason, the studio decided to remove what was a very helpful band of colour that indicated where the focus distance was set in the Crew 2. Without that, you're essentially flying blind, as the huge focus steps and the confusingly opposed start and end settings make it extremely difficult to see where the plane of focus actually lies. Thankfully, there is an excellent autofocus option that does a good job of targeting whatever is in the center reticle and should definitely be used instead. Even one of the best features is not immune to the flawed implementation here. That replay timeline gets split every time you change event, open a menu, fast travel, etc. And the navigator cannot jump across the gaps. To do that, the only option seems to be to go from photo mode to replay mode to video editor and hope that there's a preset keyframe in the section that you want. As with any racing game, the obvious things to be taking pictures of are the cars and the on-track action, and Motorfest delivers that and more with sports cars, open wheel racers, bikes, boats, planes and even monster trucks to take out on the roads, dirt, in the air and on the ocean. Nice. To add some personalization, Vehicles can be customised with body modifications, liveries and vanity items, while the themed playlists also include loan vehicles ensuring that you can always roll up to each curated event in style. The routes are also adorned with flags and lights to play to the theme, but this does highlight a major downside. As an example, the Made in Japan playlist honours the Japanese street racing culture and puts you in a series of highly modified street machines as you boost through the city at night with neon signs blazing and reflecting on the soaking wet tarmac. As soon as you pull that replay into the photo mode though, the time of day and the weather are reset and none of the options can match the setup that the game had during the race. It's a real shame and it's always frustrating to have such vibrant colours and reflections just taken away. Even beyond these tailored events though, Motorfest has a lot that will catch the eye. The island never fails to deliver fabulous locations to park up at or fly over, and it's easy to forget about the vehicles and just grab some shots of the scenery. Then there is the absolutely incredible 3D map. This lets you explore the whole island from above and also seamlessly drop down to ground level to see things in fully animated detail. In case the idea hasn't popped for you yet, this makes it an amazing tool for scouting out locations for a photo shoot. Just find that next surf beach, mountain top observatory or sofa pool, set a waypoint and head over to snap away. The rainbow bridge will make a perfect spot to mark the occasion. Smile. Crew Motorfest is an absolute blast to play with events and challenges scattered all over the island and lots of inspiration to be found in the wide variety of vehicles and magnificent locations. It's also equipped with a well featured photo mode that has many of the tools needed to take advantage. Sadly though some unrefined implementations and the removal of essential options do slightly spoil the fun. 